Okay, this is the fourth video in this series. We're going to talk about dot .files and how to clone them. So what are dot .files? There are files that store the settings to configure your different apps. You usually keep them in a repo to reproduce the changes on many devices. So in my dot .files, I keep settings for my applications like Alacrity, Tmux, Carabiner, Starship, and the rest of them. Let me show you real quick what I mean by this. I'm going to open this on a new tab. Okay, so here are my dot .files. Let me open this. So each one of the applications that I mentioned, Alacrity, has a configuration file, which is this one is for Alacrity. For Starship, for example, here's the configuration file. For Tmux, here's the file. For Vim, here's the VimRC file. Yabai, which is a window manager, and the CSHRC file. We're going to go over each one of these apps in the future videos. So if you don't know what they are, don't worry about it. We'll see them in detail in the next videos. Okay, so what are repos? It's just online storage, but for code. So you can store different projects there. It's like a Google Drive. If you, don't, if you know nothing about this, you can think of it as a Google Drive, but for, for code. So what's the importance of the ZSHRC file? So every time you open your terminal, which is down here, if you're using CSH as your shell, which is the default, the ZSHRC file is executed. Also, every time that you source that file, you execute the file. And by executing, I mean that you run each one of the commands inside that file, okay? And this is important because I use the CSHRC file as the master file to update the rest of my local dot files. So every time I open my terminal, if there are changes in GitHub, they will be applied locally on my computer. They will be pulled down from GitHub and applied locally. Let me show you what I mean. So here's the file. This is a function that I created, which creates a backup of your file. If you already have an existing configuration file on your computer, it's going to back it up first. If you don't have one, it's just going to download my files and point the files in your computer to my dot .files. We'll, we'll see what this means in a minute. You'll see it in action. So we create a symlink for each one of these files, the MRC, CSHRC, Tmux, Alacrity file, Yabai. We'll see what those mean later on. And um, here's the rest of the file, the auto completion settings. There are some history settings as well here, some common aliases. And here is where I fix the caveats. We talked about caveats in a previous video, and this is where we fix the caveats that we didn't fix back then. For Starship, for example, I verify if the file exists. If it does exist, or if it is installed, I apply this command, which is needed to initialize Starship. Same for the rest of the tools that we're gonna use in the tutorial. We're gonna see what each part of this file does in later videos. All you need to know now is that we need to clone the dot .files, okay? Because we need to configure each one of the apps we installed on the previous video, and uh, we're gonna be using the settings that I have stored in my dot .files. Instead of cloning the repo, I recommend you to fork it. So if I make changes in the future, those changes will not affect you. I'm gonna show you how to fork the repo in the video. Okay, so first, you need to sign into GitHub. If you don't have an account, you have to create one. Once you're in GitHub, after you created the account, you just open my repo. The easiest way to do it is just opening my repo, which is here. Notice that I'm on a different account right now. This is not my main account. So you just come here, click on fork. You give it a name. I'm gonna use the same name and I click on create fork. So that basically created a copy of the other repo, but in my account. So as you can see here, it says fork from my repo. If you don't want to fork the repo, it's fine. You can also clone directly. And I'm going to show you how to disable automatic updates. 
if you want to disable automatic updates, if you clone directly, you have to edit this file, CSHRC, and you need to modify. No, this is the file that you need to edit. You need to comment some lines here. This is what automatically pulls the changes. So if you want to clone my repo directly, just make sure you comment this. Because otherwise, if I make changes, you're going to get those changes automatically. Okay, so now we're going to clone the repo that we forked. We're going to create a directory first and change into that directory. Okay, now we're there. We're going to clone that repo. You just have to get the link. Let's go back to the main page of the repo. And here, we're going to get the URL. We just copy that. And we run the git clone command. We just paste the URL. We already got the repo. This is what we did right now. Now that we clone the repo, we're going to create a backup of your CSHRC file. If you don't have a CSHRC file, nothing is going to happen. But if you do have one, this is going to create a backup of the file. Let's do that right now. Okay, let's look at that file. I'm going to copy this. And here's the file. Here's the backup that we just created. Now we're going to create a symbolic link, which is like a shortcut that points this CSHRC file to the file that we have in the dot files directory that we just cloned. So let's do that. Okay. With that, we created the sim link. Let's look at that file. Here is the file. As you can see, the CSHRC file is now pointing to the file that we downloaded or that we cloned, the repo that we cloned. We need to apply all the changes in that file. Let's do that. You're going to see some changes. Okay. So here's the function that I was talking about. Created different symbolic links for the different dot files. So it created all of them. Let's look at those files now. This is going to make a bit more sense right now. So as you can tell, Hammer Spoon is now pointing to the file in my dot files. The same for Tmux is pointing to the file in my dot files. This VMRC file is pointing there as well. You buy CSHRC. For now, I'm going to switch over to my Alacrity terminal, which is the one that I like using. I'm going to type here Alacrity. I'm going to open it. And now you're going to see my colors. Let's go back here. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to explain what Alacrity is, why I use it in the Alacrity video. So remember, if you cloned my repo directly instead of working it, just comment the auto update lines. Let me show you how to do that real quick. Let's go to github.files. I'm going to open NeoVim, which is my text editor. Okay, so let's go bound, let's go down to the CSHRC file. So if you clone, you need to comment the section. Here, I need to comment these three lines so that if I make changes and I push them to GitHub, you don't get those changes automatically. That's it for this video. If you want to continue to the next video in the series, just go here. I'll see you there.